And we're starting. Oh, and we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tort Snuffers. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, okay, my wonderful co-host is not here, but it doesn't matter because this is not a normal episode. No, this is our preseason fantasy draft, and I'm not here by myself. I'm joined by the beautiful Prince Ty. Good evening. <laughs> He's really striking a pose. The always awesome Stephen Lehman. Hello. That girl from Canada, Elise Anderson. Hi. And the person who probably knows the most about Survivor, Alex Cash. I do feel like I'm going to start a feud between Alex with, uh, with Steven about the whole who knows the most thing, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so anyways, what we are doing today is we are drafting players from Survivor Millennials uh, Gen X versus the newest season. You know what it is. It has a stupid name. Anyways, we're picking our BG2. players. Exactly. BG2. We're picking our players for that, and we're going to discuss the season and all that stuff. But anyways, we have divided ourselves into teams, and I actually think the team, uh, the Dankest Generation, and whose team is that? That's mine. Alex, okay, so Alex is going to get the very first pick, so here's what we're going to do. Alex is going to pick one of the 20 castaways, and we're going to talk about that castaway for a little bit, how they're, they're going to do and stuff like that. But without further ado, Alex, go ahead and pick. And also, viewers, we will be posting a list of everyone's teams below, and you can kind of bet on and guess on whose team's going to do the best. I'll give you a hint. If we stop talking about it during the podcast, it's because my team is doing bad, because that's what we did last season. All right, <laughs> Alex, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So who's your first pick going to be and why? All right. Well, first of all, I, where do I pick Jesus on, on the website? Because I, I refreshed and it's not giving me the option. Okay. So uh, what you can do is – Oh, here it is. Yeah, there we go. It's probably the big button that says pick a player here. See, we like Alex not because he's regular smart but because he's survivor smart, and that's all that matters right now. Yeah, so what I did this season is because I suck so bad at picking people for Survivor uh, drafts. Like, I, like my winner pick has been out within the first 10 days, I think, like the last three seasons in a row, four. Um, so, so I went with the random number gods on this one. I just okay. put, all, what are those, put all the what are names those, in there, randomized them. And what do those gods tell you to pick first? Zeke. Best. Okay. And Let's, and I, I watched his video and the the impression that I get of him is that he's going to be like he has that sandy factor where you know he's going to be entertaining for about 20 minutes and then he's going to start getting on people's nerves. Okay, cuz that's weird that that's how you read him, Stephen. I'm guessing you read him a little differently cuz it's from the look um, of your face. Oh no, I laughed at the sandy factor, but um I I do sort of I see what Alex is saying. I don't necessarily agree with it. I, I, I think Zeke is someone who I personally would like love and get along with, but I also see how he would get annoying. Um, my only question is, will he say, I'm pissed? Uh, <laughs> that is true if he has a sanity factor. I guess my overall read of Zeke was that I think there's enough fodder on the uh, Millennials tribe to keep him safe for a little bit, especially when we look at like the other personalities. Because, I mean... The crazy millennials aren't going to vote off the outrageous, flamboyant gay guy first unless he does something, you know, really insane. Meanwhile, there's a couple of sitting ducks, and I think we're going to get to them a little bit later. Ty, did you want to add to this, or at least? Um, I agree with Colin. I, let's put it this way. They're putting him out as a big character because he's going to be around for at least a little bit to develop that character. I don't think he's one of the first couple of boots. Um, I kind of see him as like a snarky Ty, maybe. Possibly, in terms of, like, just being, like, playing up, like, how he's the gay kid, and he's done all this and all that sort of business, and how he's different, when in reality, being, like, smarter than Ty and understanding, like, how to, you know, play the game and such, yeah. which Ty was not very good at doing. Well, and the thing is, if um, Zeke winds up on the swap with a majority of Gen X's, I think that's when his goose could be cooked. Maybe. But I think, I think he's... I think he's uh, safe at least for the first little bit. Yeah. He gets around. He he gets through for a bit because they wouldn't be showing him, showing us how zany he is mm -hmm. if he wasn't going to get a little bit far. Yeah, and he's gonna have a shit ton of confessionals with Alex. That's gonna be good for your yes. uh, fantasy. Sport. That's why I want. Yes, I'm, I'm very I'm very pleased with my random numbers. I don't believe it was a random number. Like, watch it be like perfect picks every time. All right, so <laughs> Alex has made his pick. So I believe it flows on. Who's the next person? 
Elise is next. Oh, I'm next. You are. How are you? Okay, for all the viewers out there, our names are in a list, so no one should be surprised if they're next. <laughs> I. How do I pick? <laughs> it's not showing up. <laughs> it, it's it's <laughs> like the the button for me was above where it says overview stats. Can we get someone from uh, Fantasy Tech Support? <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, do I need to refresh? Because it says my I'm next. Definitely pick. refresh. Okay. Yeah, you definitely want to refresh after everyone picks. Okay. So Stephen, while they're figuring this out, at least let me know when he picks ready. I do want to talk about something, and this is a minor spoiler alert. But EW has um, already talked about this. There is kind of something really big that happens early on in this season. I think it's going to happen in episode one. Yeah. And for those of you that don't want to know, just plug your ears. Come back in about two minutes. We'll let you know it's ready. So there is going to be a massive storm. Or it already happened. There was a massive storm. And they were filming the season. And they had to evacuate the castaways. Do you think that actually has any long-term impact on the game? Or is it all just, you know, some hogwash to get us interested? I mean... I wouldn't say it's like hogwash to get us interested. I think, I think it, you know, it, it's it's a part of the game that they're gonna have to deal with. Um, I I don't know if it's necessarily um, gonna have any long term implications, but I think it's definitely um, something that's gonna be a pretty big first episode storyline at the very mm -hmm. least. Maybe I could see it going through the first few episodes even, but I wouldn't say it's something that's gonna be like at the end of the game. I mean. You may have someone cite like the storm on day one as like a moment as they like and they're like you know that storm gave me the strength to get here them but like I don't think there's gonna be like a huge um, yeah long term implication of it and that's kind of why I think they're actually spoiling it because it's just like oh look this is something cool that happens but I mean it's not like if you it's not like there's gonna be a storm alliance or at least I hope not because I would look really stupid Elise are you ready I am ready I figured okay. out what I was doing wrong I was not logged in <laughs> uh, okay well. All right. Okay, so I am picking, interestingly enough, I didn't think I was going to do this, but I'm going to be picking a millennial. I am picking Mari for my Damn first it. pick. Okay. And here's, here's, I, she's going to get a lot of confessionals, no matter her. what. Yes, yeah. so, yeah, she is. God I, damn it. I have... <laughs> Mari fans okay, but at least I want to hear you talk about Mari before we go to all of us, because I think we all have strong opinions on her. Okay, I'm really happy to see Mari. I'm happy to see another professional gamer on the show. I think the last one we had was Ken from Gabon, who was also really interesting to watch. Uh, I know she did a lot with Smosh. I think she is more outgoing than Ken was. I think she's smart. It'll be interesting to see how she does with this cast, but I'm really excited to have a female, not only a professional gamer, a female professional gamer, and hopefully she can do well on this drive, and that's why I picked her. Yeah. Well, Ty, go ahead mm -hmm. before I go on my Mari rant. I feel like she's in a good position. I, one, she's going to get a lot of confessionals because she's well-versed and she's a YouTube personality, which kind of makes her stand out. Two, she's an athlete. She was a ballet dancer. To that end, I feel like she's going to be good physically, which means that they're not going to pick her off as a weak link early on, even if they're dysfunctional. Three, she had comments about you know, possibly wanting to be a villain, and she doesn't know why people are going to be villains. So I think she's going to play up possibly like a head bitch in charge role, but not like an annoying Liz one where <laughs> Liz was stupid and so overbearing and aligned with Obama. Like, I feel like she could do really well. There's a chance she could flame out as well, but she'll still probably last at least three episodes and talk throughout. At the, the very least, time. I think she's going to be getting confessionals, yeah. like you said, Absolutely. and hopefully going to be a power player for at least the pre-merge. And, and I think that's very a very good assessment. I picture her only getting voted out if there's a swap and she gets swap fucked, mm -hmm. and then getting seventh place because everyone looks, they get a seventh place and they go, oh my god, this girl is going to win. And then Tyler wins immunity or like, you know, Mike wins immunity or something like that. Sure. That's kind of how I picture her. I do think she's a little too big to win Survivor, and I know that sounds kind of weird, but what I noticed during all of her preseason interviews it was that she wasn't talking as a person. She was talking as a YouTube personality. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if she's going to try to bring that personality, like the fakeness of it in a way, to the game, I think people will not trust her. But if she can calm down a tiny bit and be a little bit less aggressive, I think she's getting seventh, maybe even better. I know this is stereotypical. Yeah. I kind of see her as like Nicaragua Brenda. I feel like she's going to flirt a lot. I feel like she's going to like 
mm-hmm. try to run shit and that it might not work out for her because people see her as a threat somewhat overtly. Um, I, I can emerge. see that. Steven, go ahead. Real quick comment on the thing you touched on, Colin. I think the reason she was hyping up the YouTube sort of persona is because it was pre-game stuff mm-hmm. and she wanted to sort of come across that way in the interviews. I think once the game starts, probably people are going to, she's probably going to be a little bit more, I wouldn't say mellow per se, but maybe a little more um, normal, I guess. I, I don't know why I want to say she's not normal, but, but you know. Um, but I love Mari. I've loved her since like I was in middle school, so yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is that's what I'm looking for, is that if, if in the second episode she's still like, I, I think she's done, but if in the second episode she's calmer and using all of her skills that we've talked about, she's going to finish pretty well. All right, so it's my turn to pick. Um, there's one person I really want to pick, but I think I'm going to save this person for a second because I don't think you guys will pick him. So I'm actually going to pick someone else who I think is going to be getting a lot of confessionals, and that's Hannah. Damn it. Mm-hmm. I'm drafting it. Like now, however, the thing about Hannah is when you have, you have someone that's like, oh, I'm so awkward, I'm so blah, 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 I'm so blah, 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 that can really easily get on people's nerves. However, much like with the, the kind of the running theme with, you know, Zeke, Mari, and Hannah, these kind of traits pass really well with millennials, but I'm afraid that when they transfer over with the Gen Xs, it's going to paint a giant target on their back, where someone like Tyler, when he's with the Gen Xs, he'll be able to blend a little bit better. Does anyone else want to talk about Hannah? I have I have one word uh, about the whole, you know, I'm awkward and adorable kind of thing. Irene, that didn't go well when she was when she was on Worlds Apart, and I, I foresee something similar happening to, to Hannah. I just hope it doesn't get. I, big. I, I think. Hannah has a little bit more awareness than Shireen, as much as I love Shireen. Um, and I think also the difference is Shireen's divisions in terms of tribe was by class or color or whatever. Whereas Hannah, it's more of an age and sort of generational divide. And I think it's easier to fit in, for her anyway, generationally than, say, if she was on like a a tribe of no color. Which well, I I'm just going to say this flat out. The millennials tribe is made up of more goofy people than regular people. Right. So I imagine the goofy people picking off one of some of those normal people. Well, we'll talk about that a bit. Ty, go ahead. I basically, when I was taking notes and watching all their videos, which I did last night while drunk, so I might have some of this wrong. I basically said that her floor was Shireen and her ceiling was Aubrey. I don't think she's going to reach the oh. ceiling. I don't think she's going to quite reach the floor. I, I will say this. My fear with her and the reason that I would have made her like a mid-round pick as opposed to picking her now is the virtue of the fact that like Aubrey was like in her head, like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And then like came out of that shell throughout the season. Mm-hmm. But she was a stronger like physical presence. She was not a small, tiny girl. And like she was almost like built more for the elements. This girl seems really, really tiny, as if, like, the storm could really, really rack her. And the millennials might be goofy, but they do need to win challenges, and she's not going to help them do that, possibly, well, and, if it's a physical and, challenge. Yeah. And that could doom her early, which is why I feel like there's a lot more risk, and I had her mid- or middle tier. Well, that seems I think there's two players in particular on the millennials <laughs> tribe that are completely screwed, but we'll get to them later. So Yoga mm-hmm. Flame is next. Who is that? And why'd you name your team that? Uh, because so- of certain guests that are possibly coming that and because I had like ten seconds to come up with a team right. name, so we're getting a little long. Um, I already and- lost the two people I really wanted, but I do have like a consolation third. I was impressed with Jessica on the Gen X tribe. She's Which? not super old. She's 37. She's an attorney, I believe, so she's well-spoken, but not like... And I think she like grew up on like a ranch or something like that, yeah. which I thought kind of gave her like humble beginnings and also indicated that she's probably done some, you know, stable work, done like horse work, and therefore yeah. is physically fit enough to put up with the elements. She seems like a fun, bubbly personality. Um, combine all these things, I feel like she's going to be a good bet to get pretty far. I feel like she's not going to not pull her weight around camp. Yeah. 
And I feel like with the bigger personalities, like that big douchey football player looking guy and all that sort of business, that she will probably like maybe not get a well, ton of confessionals early, but be there for the long haul. That's kind of like, what I had for her too. is I said she's vanilla enough to play well. And by mm -hmm. that, I meant she has on paper, she has all the skill set and she's not going to be a muckraker at all. And I, no, I think Tyler, the only concern about picking her for fantasy is that she, she couldn't get fifth a lot right away. Yeah. with four confessionals. That's the only worry. I feel like she'll talk. There's a, nothing else. There's a sort of a nick, uh, a canon nickname, if you will, that people call her Jessica Bland Lewis instead of Blaine Lewis, mm -hmm. because she's the type of person who people look at her and say, "How in the hell did she get cast?" I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I personally, I like her a lot. But I'm sort of in the boat of, is she going to say anything? Well, like, we're she may literally out. be Purple Kelly or Purple Jessica. Yeah. But I think I Ty's right, though. I don't see – well, I don't think she's going to get zero confessionals, but Ty, you're, you, I think you're right. I don't see a scenario where we're not talking about her being voted out until uh, after the election. You know, like I think it's going to be a while before right. her name gets written down unless she, like, gets bit by a scorpion or anything. Does anyone else want to talk about her before we move on to the next pick? I think you covered everything I had to say. <laughs> well, there's not much to say. Okay, so Andrew Savage's hot model wife, which is Steven's team, and Steven does get the award for best team name. But like I said, we are going to stop talking about this if I start losing. So, Steven, enjoy this possibly one to two episodes of Glory. Um, let me, if my... Uh, it still says Yoga Flame as the pick. Let me refresh. Oh, shit, because I have to actually oh, do oh, the thing. Come on, guys. We've, this is like the fifth time we've done this. It's not <laughs> the fifth time that Technology we've done Technology is hard. We're the millennials. We're supposed to be good at it. <laughs> I'm not a millennial. I'm fucking old. I'm <laughs> I think, Ty, I think you fall under this season's definition of millennials. Yeah. Well, you I'm 31. Yes, yeah, you, you do that. Mari, uh, you'd be the very, you know, high ceiling of millennial. Yeah. Like, where is this person? Jesus. <laughs> like, I keep refreshing. I'm like, and here's the thing. In Ty, um, he's proving that he's not a good millennial because he's really bad at this uh, technology thing. No, I found it. I just – I was actually partly making a joke because you were all complaining no, about how bland my person was, and I couldn't pick her out of the list. So, there you <laughs> go. Kind of, there you go. My turn to yeah. pick. Oh, hey, Steven. Now, out. Steven, this is a snake draft, so you do get two picks. Um, explain each one. Okay. Um, oh, God. Who do I want? Um, first one is someone who I think... Um, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to defend myself. I'm taking yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Of course you're taking Sunday. She's Ooh. a hag. Um, but I actually have reasons beyond hag. Okay, time. go ahead. and you, um, We are so, wasting a lot of time. So, uh. Real quick. Um, Sunday, I think uh, I think she's a very polarizing uh, in terms of longevity. I think she either, her ceiling is uh, Holly. Her floor is Wendy Jo. Um, that's, um, I, I think she has the ability to make it incredibly far. Um, she's a youth pastor, so she obviously knows how to talk with sort of the millennials. Um, I, uh, you know, obviously she may be a little too sort of zany and religious for some folks personally, but I, I think she's sort of the type of older, technically, woman who has the ability to make it far. Um, do I think she can win? I don't know, but I think she, if she's, if she's there... She's got a lot of content, and even if she's not there for a long while, she gets a good amount of content. So I would be shocked if she made it to the swap. And I think the millennials could save her, but I think the millennials would probably be even more bothered by her. So unless she had a giant meat shield, I don't see – I don't know. I, my only note for her just says fucked. Ty, go ahead. I'm not 100% certain you're right, Colin, and I'll tell okay. you why. Because okay. they bring up the fact pretty strongly in her edit that she's a breast cancer survivor. She's already a survivor. Okay. Why are they bringing that up if she's going to be fodder within two episodes? But, I didn't know shit about Wendy Jo other than she had a ridiculous jacket, I think possibly a goofy hat, and then she got voted out first. We know that this woman survived cancer. Okay. And to that That's end, I feel like they bring that up for a reason. They bring up all this shit in the pregame thing for a reason. Yeah. And to I that also end, feel like she will I, get a lot of confessionals. Yeah. Absolutely. However long, I, I think she'll get confessionals for the two episodes she's in. 
I can see her being around longer. I mean, all of your points are valid, Colin, yeah. but I'm saying again, oh, no, I bring this up as a big character. If from the edge standpoint, anywhere. which is something that we often operate on, which is why a lot of people got, um, I don't know if you ever saw the comments on our videos, viewers and listeners, people were a little upset that we were saying Michelle was probably going to win when that's what, because we oh, were using the comments? editing. Yeah. Well, look at that. We have viewers, people are yeah. watching her. People do watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for being correct, viewers. I apologize. Oh, no. We, we got so to like, how is Michelle going to win? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, anyway, Stephen, go ahead and make your second okay. pick. Uh, so, second pick. Um, I think I can let who I want fall. Oh, one more pick. So, let me see. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick someone who I think. Probst is going to jizz over. Um, okay, go ahead so and pick. I'm picking Taylor. All right, and I was calling him Tyler earlier, but I meant Taylor. Yeah. Um, right. He's actually one of the people I'm worried about on the Millennials tribe. Oh, see, I'm not, because He'll I will make it to merge. Challenge. Yeah, I think he makes merge easy. Challenges. Well, I mean, but I don't know. I could see the goofballs of Millennials, and this is just, you know... I, mean, How I, I think he also has the propensity to be a goofball. I think just because he gives off a normal vibe, I, I, I Well, I guess I don't believe in his social game because he's so young and beautiful, whereas the other beautiful people like Malcolm and Joel that do really well, at least they're or Joe, at least they're old enough to kind of, you know, have to have developed some social skills. Joe, I Joe's feel like, like 23. Oh, well, he was still absolutely amazing, and we love him. Well, yeah. I, I just don't comments, see, I don't see that same glow. Go ahead, Ty. My literal comments on him were he looks high as shit and early merge challenge threat dude. I yeah. feel like I definitely feel like we will hear probes, you know, verbally orgasm while he's like swimming in the water. And that that will be what we know about him until he's picked off at the merge. He is like your merge group because he's such a huge threat. He might get a little bit further if he shows some personality. I don't know. I think if you know millennials win I two, <laughs> I think millennials win like two rounds in a row, and they go, "Hey, we don't need strength." One of those big, one of those guys is gonna go. That's yeah. not Zeke. Okay, so uh, anyone else want to comment real quick before we move on to the next boot? Our next uh, pick, which is I actually, I just want to point out that in Survivor casting. The hot girls often are actually like super smart and can do well. Where the hot guys, aside from Malcolm, they tend to do like Drew Christie upside, where they're kind of dumb. And they, like, well, it's flop. because Survivor does kind of <laughs> cast in stereo in somewhat stereotypical manners. For instance, mm -hmm. if um, it was pointed out, I believe in a Survivor Oz interview, and you can have to go way back. If you look at the first couple seasons of Survivor, they would pick African American males that seemed to be the Harvard type or the well-read type, yeah. and that was accompanied by African-American females that seemed much more street. And you can kind of apply that to almost a lot of the seasons in the first kind of 12 or so. So it's a possibility that that's what they do with the males. They go, oh, you're a hot guy. you got to be dumb. Where you're a hot female. We want to see you be a villainous. Yeah, or at the very least, like, secretly smart. Like, hey, I may be hot, but at least I actually have an Ivy League education. Right, yeah. Like Sydney last season, you know, she was freaking... She was perfect. Hawks, but like exactly. She, yeah. Where guys are like, I'm a badass manipulator of this Escape. game. All right, so uh, go ahead, Yoga Flame. Make your next pick. All righty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this queued up while I talk. Um, my next pick... I kind of sickens me to the degree that like he's such an overplayed archetype on the show already, and I'm afraid that like don't do it based don't on that. Pick. I am picking Adam. I feel like Adam is essentially like Spencer, except again he's doing it for his sick mom, which is more of a motivation than Spencer had in two seasons of I think I might like a girl. <laughs> Maybe, possibly. So I feel like, one, they're giving us extra stories so that we're empathetic with him because he might get further. Mm -hmm. I also do think that as big of a mess as the Millennial Tribe is probably going to be, he will probably get by, despite being an overt, like, know-it-all jackass. And, mm -hmm. like, I don't feel like his... Like, he's kind of, like, normal-ish, although his voice is, like, so pre-rehearsed and all that sort of business that, like, 
I like noted that he sounded like a news anchor or something or other. But I feel like he'll probably be too smart for like to let himself be the normal person that gets yeah. booted. Exactly. And his mom is sick, so again, we're supposed to care positively about him. And, I, and he'll probably talk about his mom a lot. Yeah. I mean, I did get good vibes from him, but he was one of those people that I was like, you know, it was really hard for me to place. Does anyone else want to comment on him? Yeah, I, ha I have a comment about the, uh, the the tribe situation in general. Is mm -hmm. that uh, like the last time we had an age divide season? They altered the challenges, uh, and so I so the comment about them needing challenge strength or not needing challenge. I I think that both tribes will have an incentive not to, you know, really care about challenge strength because they're going to have wonky challenges. They're going to have like challenges based on the age group, like millennials. It's like turn on a smartphone, and then like Gen X, it's like use a pencil sharpener, like one of the ones up against the wall. That well, kind of what stuff. I mean is, like in Nicaragua, like all but two of the challenges were completely new, mm -hmm. and that was because they didn't want to have stuff be too physical for the over 40. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I am going to go ahead and make my pick now. This is someone who I don't think you guys were going to pick for a while. But if y'all remember way back in the day, I picked Mike as my winner pick, and I'm getting Mike vibes from one player. Do I think he's going to reiterate Mike? No, but do I think he's going to get a hell of a lot of confessionals and be a villain for the while? Yes, and that is Chris from the Gen Xs, the douchey guy with the goatee. I was going to pick him. Well, oh, my I God. I beat you to it. Um, he's Andrew Savage, but fat. He's and Southern. Yeah, and but however, though, I think – he does have a very, very good shot at making the merge. I'm worried about him being swapped onto a tribe with a bunch of millennial girls because then he's he's fucked. Yeah. There's no if ands, or but about it. But I do think he's going to get a lot of confessionals on the Gen X tribe. Him and Paul are going to be kind of the narrators. And so, I don't know. I'm expecting at least uh, you know a 10th place out of him. Yeah, the, the, I think he's going to get a lot of confessionals. I think yeah. he's going to own it, and I hope he makes it far. <laughs> the thing with him is that, like, I, I think people are going to see him as trustworthy right off the bat. And well, Gen Xers will. And they're that's going to chafe it, chafe it his, uh, yeah. begin, uh, his leadership because mm -hmm. I, I don't think he's that subtle. Yeah. Well, thing is, I like. Uh, I just also, said, he's a Boston sports fan, so I'm already biased against him. Well, and Brett's gonna like him then. But I think Gen Xers will respect him, and millennials are gonna fucking hate him. Wait, Chris is a Boston. I thought Chris is from Oklahoma. From Oklahoma. Chris yeah, Brett. He, he said about the the 2007 New York. That's, that's Brett. That's yeah, Brett. Brett, there is that's Brett, Brett, who's later on, who's another big oh. personality. Oh crap! I'm getting him confused. All right. So, anyways. Brett Next is fat person. Boston Rob, not fat Mike or Marty. <laughs> All right, let's, <laughs> let's get the next pick going. There you go. Who was that? You, that you at least? Oh, yes. yeah, I'm refreshing. Cool. Um, funny that you should mention Brett because barring Chris being stolen from me, Good. he's actually my Good next pick. So. And that's why he's going to get some confessionals and he's not going to be the first boot. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I have high hopes for him. I, I'm not sure if he'll be as quite as big of a personality as Chris, but I think he has the potential to do well, especially as a police officer. He at least has like some skills to back himself up. And I mean, and Sunday's being voted out first of that tribe, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> All right. So the only thing about Brett is, do you think Brett could relate? better to the millennials than someone like Chris because that's the only thing is I actually think Brett he has kind of that softer side I don't think he could win the millennials over but I think he could survive a vote with them Stephen go ahead you seem to be saying no already well I don't think he vibes with millennials because he's a cop and millennials I, I for some reason I don't see that vibing well I think if he plays it off and he you know, like just tries to be mellow and doesn't let too much info slip about what he does. Um, he may be okay, but I think if he ends up on a swap with millennials, I think he's doomed. Well, and I think um, that's a good point to make about if he's calm, because that's kind of my worry about him, is I think he could freak out in episode two and burn the whole shelter down. But if he's just like, hey, I'm the big guy, blah, 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 and plays it up kind of almost like a Paul would, he could slide in and last a while. Go ahead, Alex. 
So since I gave my opinion about Brett and the Chris entry, I'm going to give my opinion about Chris and the Brett entry. All right, go ahead. And I will say that, like, several people, like, usually the usually in the cast preview videos, nobody talks about the other castaways that much. At least three different people said, I already hate the football player looking guy. <laughs> so like if, if if they're letting that into the into the videos, he is going to crash and burn. And that's fair. All right, so let's go ahead and let's move on. We're, we're halfway there. We're living on a prayer. All right. Go ahead, Dinkus Generation, and you get two in a row again. Yes. All right, you get two in a row. So I'm I'm refreshing and I'm going to pick someone who like th this this is another serendipitous random number thing okay because like i don't think this person has any kind of shot at I winning say the name of the Jesus talk guys the on his way there and yeah. that's ken okay the the because the thing that i think he's trying to he was trying to sell in his video was that you know I like I could see him trying to play the reformed bad boy Vetus angle, but I don't see him being nearly as smooth about it. No. Well, I think, but also, I mean, Vetus was only first boot in the season of All Stars. I think Ken has some some minor legs in this game. I think he there's a scenario where he makes merge, but I just I could see Gen Xers not trusting him and millennials hating him. See, because I think that if he if he uh, if he makes the swap, then I think the millennials will be slightly more accommodating of him because he's a little bit more loosey Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how millennials are going to respond to his sleazy car salesman vibe. Go ahead, Stephen. Before real quick, on. I just want to make a comment about something that I saw that I uh, had in his cast video. Um, he made a comment about his four year old saying, "If you win the money, we can help the homeless." And I was thinking to myself, "She's a four year old." No four-year-old wants to be like, what's help the homeless? So, like, of all the nevers that have happened, that is the never that happened the most. That is the most never. All right. That's fair. So go ahead and make your second picks, Alex. All right. So let's see who's next on the list. All right. I, I, fores I foresee this person just absolutely failing because he, like, in his video – no, no, no dip teases. Alex is sucks so at everything great. Survivor, and yeah. that is David. Damn it. Oh, I see. I think there's a scenario in which David wins this season. It's a very, very narrow path. But I think if David makes merge, I think he could bond very well with millennials. I'm worried he's going to be picked out early of Gen X's, but I could see his kind of like awkwardness and, oh, I'm David and fun loving spirit carrying him a long way. Go ahead, uh, Steven. I guess you're the next because you're the one. Real quick, I think if David is able to overcome those first few sort of rounds, I'd say, he has legs. I think it's those first few rounds that are very troubling for him. But the reason why I'm sort of more pessimistic on him is because we're not getting a lot of content about him. Okay. I feel like if David lasted a good while in the game, he would definitely be talked about more than he is. Um, I feel like, as much as I want him to succeed, I'm, I'm being, I'm pessimistic. Okay, and that, that that's fair, but I mean, I guess we're gonna see how David goes. Does anyone else want to comment on him before we move on? I basically agree with you 100. percent I think if he if he gets to the merge, he's golden. I feel like he would have been like a long legged player if he had been on the millennials because I feel like he fits them. Mm -hmm. um, he's tiny and not going to be super strong, and if it's, there's any strength challenge, he's going to stick out like a sore thumb, and they might kill him. Well, that's the thing. Is I think they would get rid of one of the girls first, like Maybe. Sunday, but we'll see. All right, so uh, go ahead, next pick. Let's get this ball going. That's me. Okay, for my next pick, I'm going to choose someone who I think is a bit of the risk because they're on Gen X. I think they will fit in very well with the Millennials. I have high hopes that they'll make it there. They may be like seen as annoying. I'm picking uh, Rachel for my next pick. I'm worried about how she's going to respond to the elements. If I, I pick... That's I, kind of where I am with her. And I feel like she's used to getting her way and the first time she doesn't get away, it's going to be a cluster. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steven. I'm not worried about her in the elements, actually, because she's... 
she seems, from what we've seen of her, to be a very positive person. So I think that's definitely going to be an asset for her. I think the problem for her is going to be vibing with other Gen Xs, because I think Gen X could find her sort of, I guess, perkiness sort of to be, I don't want to say annoying, but I don't know what else to say. That's my fear with her. I'm afraid she's going to be seen as annoying by the Gen Xers, but I feel like if she can just make it to a swap, I think she's going to vibe very well with the Millennials, and I think if she makes it well, that far. Do you picture her vibing with the Millennial girls? Because I really do think those Millennial girls are going to rule the world. So that's kind of where she's very upbeat, positive. She might, and maybe she's going to be one of those people who gets ostracized on her original tribe and then wants to seek working with someone else because she doesn't like the tribe she's on. Um, I could see her being. <laughs> see, I, I don't know why. I just think that. Um, well, millennial... she's not your pick, Colin. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I don't see her going well, but I, we'll see. We'll see. I've been wrong before. Very rarely, viewers and listeners. All right, so yeah, um, go ahead, Alex. I'm gonna set up my pick. Um, so like I think I think that uh, she'll make it to make it to the millennials because I think that there's gonna be a guy, probably Chris, who takes a look at her, reads her for a for a dumb blonde, and thinks, you know, like I, I have nothing in common with this person. She she but she has no brains in her head. Therefore, I can manipulate her. So she she will make it just far enough to screw to to screw over the people who dragged her along. I don't think she's gonna win, but I think she has potential to yeah. <laughs> make it far. Meanwhile, I'm staring at the list trying to figure out who would be best. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. At this point, it gets tricky. I'm doing this just for the confessionals, but I am picking Paul. Uh, <laughs> There was a lot of big reaction there. He's going to get a lot of confessionals. He's not going to win. That's he, literally all I have to say about him. He's Rupert. He's like Rupert for a new generation. Don't it trash Rupert like that. Shut up. Oh, wow. Shut that up. might be my favorite little exchange. Um, I don't think he'll be first boot unless he really, really pisses everybody off. I think that's going to be Sunday still. Uh, You're bitter. <laughs> Uh, the millennials might tolerate him and try to use him as a swing vote. I don't know. And this is actually something I thought we were going to touch on earlier. With this season in particular, especially looking at the cast and the cast videos, there's nobody who we are not immediately seeing their flaws and how they can lose this game. I mean, viewers, listeners, go back to that first round we were still picking. We were still saying, well, this person could do well if blank. So in a way, this is a really interesting cast because – we see a lot of flaws, and does anyone else want to comment on that? On the fact that this cast seems flawed, and uh, what what I will say is that when I uh, before we went live, when I told Colin that I was going to do this random number generator style, he's like, "That's a smart strategy." <laughs> that's kind of how I feel because everyone in this group, I mean, someone in this group is going to get a million dollars, and that's kind of weird. But I see big flaws in just about every person. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. I completely agree. Which would make an interesting season. But oh yeah, I would say it, it. sort of in that sense, it gives me sort of a Gabon vibe, where with Gabon you at least had the final three, and the final three of Gabon you want, would think you know all three of them would be first boot material, yeah. you know. And I feel like this could be sort of one of those uh, one of those sort of seasons where the final you look at the final three and you're like, damn, they could have been first boot really. Kind of, and I and I feel the same way. All right, Yoga Fire, you're next. Ah, shit. Um, I don't feel great about any of my choices that are left. I am going to go with. Fuck it. I like pretty things, so I'm going to go with Figgy. Because she is pretty. And because she's probably like Michelle, so she might win this one. Just like Michelle did last time. Sorry, Virus. I'm so sorry. She's athletic. I feel like she's strong in challenges. I feel like she's the type that would be underestimated. Mm. Probably not good that she had to tell me that she would be underestimated. But, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to the well again because Michelle won. And You might be going to the well, but here's the thing, though. Figgy, the big thing in her cast assessment was that she was too talkative. As long as she realizes that, 
She's golden. And I think she's going to be able to, I mean, I, I, I think she's going to be able to lie low. I would worry about her confessional count. Well, what do you mean? She talks but, a lot. So she probably talks Well, no, I mean, in terms of like talks a lot, in terms of like interesting shit. Because there might be a lot of confessionals of people bitching about her talking a lot, but there might not be a lot of just her right. talking. I, mean, I feel like all the guys on the tribe, with the exception of Zeke, who obviously doesn't care, but I feel like the rest of them will be like, oh, she's fun. We should try to keep her around. I think Hannah is the cutest one, but that's a, that's a different story. That's just, a uh, whole, that's just the whole thing. Anyway, does anyone else... It all depends on what you're going for. Does anyone else want to talk about Figgy? Figgy Stardust? Which will be her nickname. Okay. So let's move on. All right. Andrew Savage's hot model wife, Steven. You get two more picks, but these are your last two. These so you got to be careful. Last two. Oh yep. and, and no cock teasing. Just say, I'm picking blank and then say why. Don't do the, this person has a good personality. We ain't got time for that. All right. Well, let me see. Is it my, yeah, my pick. Okay. Um, all right. So I have, uh, I'm going to go with. Oh God, this is Slim Pickens. Um, sure is. You know what? I'm gonna pick Michaela, um, and <laughs> it's because I watched the Rob has a podcast or listened to the Rob has a podcast assessment uh, yesterday, and Corinne described her as Beyonce in a room full of Michelles. Um, so, I don't get that reference, but I guess I'm a Gen Xer. Uh, Destiny's Child, but no. Okay. In actuality, I do think Michaela is. Uh, someone who fits in well with the millennials, uh, but also someone who could vibe well with the Gen X because she has the mentality of hard work is what helps you succeed. Um, so, yeah, I think she uh, is someone who is able to go far. Well, and I think she has the potential to go far, and I actually wrote that she would be the bridge between the two generations, but that could be a spot that gets her in a lot of trouble, and that's kind of why I didn't pick her was because I feel like either she wins the whole thing or if she goes down in a blaze of glory, a blaze of glory, episode five, you know. Yeah. Anyone else want to comment on her? Oh, I agree. I could. I, I enjoyed her. There was a quote in her video where she said something about my godparents were 60, 60 when I was zero, and I just for some reason with that draw, found it amusing and endearing. That being said, I could also see the other millennials not working hard enough for her, and her not sugarcoating that, and then murdering her early. Mm -hmm. So to that end, you know, at this point it makes sense to pick somebody like her because what's left, but like she was way too well, big of a risk for me and I had her down in my lower tier. Because and the thing is, it depends on when the tribe swap is. If there's a tribe swap at 18, which is the rumor, and they go into three tribes, she's mm -hmm. safe. But if the tribe swap isn't until 14 or something like that, you know, she could be on a tightrope. So Steven, go ahead and make your next pick. All right. And final pick. Um, so last pick... I already have my semi douche. I have my hag. I have my Kayla. Um, so, you ever have too many hags? Oh, uh, that's true. Um, well, there's no real hag left, but um, I'm gonna pick. Let's go with uh, Team Christ. So Michelle. <laughs> See, Michelle <laughs> is one of those people who I think I, I see pre-merge. I don't. I don't know. I feel like especially if the millennials and if, honestly the two different ways those tribes look like the dynamics have been, I don't think it's going to do well on Gen X. And I don't think it's going to do well on millennials. Real Go quick, ahead, I, think, I, think I completely agree. I basically okay. see Michelle as Liz from last season. If you interchange, I'm super smart with I'm super religious. I feel like she was so fucking one note in her little you know 90 second blurb that She's fodder. She's fodder. She's going to talk about how much she loves God, but woohoo, I got a boyfriend at home. How exciting. Yeah. I feel like I, she's operating on a completely different plane. I, yeah. I, real quick, Michelle, go ahead, Stephen. Go ahead. I, say, I feel like she almost, she's almost a parody of herself in that sense, and that like her whole angle is, I love God, I'm, I'm a good Christian girl, but no one knows I have a boyfriend at home. And I feel like if they sort of, the editors at least play that angle for the, what, four episodes she's bound to last, mm -hmm. She'll be, no, um, but I, I feel like if her thing was like I'm really religious, but I'm gonna backstab people anyway and like work on that, then she'd be a more interesting character and maybe make it mm. far. But if it's like I have a boyfriend at home, oh my god! Like, <laughs> and they, and like, that was the big secret. Yeah, and, and like I feel like a lot of the guys, and I don't mean this in any 
disrespect to her. I feel like a lot of the guys wouldn't go for her because she is so overtly religious, and the guys in that tribe are very free spirited. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with religion. Everyone has their own personal faith. But just, you know, you have to play to your audience. And the audience of guys in that room, I don't think care. You yeah. know, I don't think they're going to be focusing on her. It's not when you have the uh, YouTube gamer girl. All right, so uh, Fiery Yoga or whatever. You're next. <laughs> Did you never play Street Fighter? What the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> so I have one pick left. And... I kind of want to go even between males and females, although it's going to leave me uneven between Gen Xs and Millennials, but I really don't feel strongly well towards any of the Gen Xers left. To that end, I'm going to pick the youngin. I'm going to go ahead and pick Will. I will say that like his voice is super deep for somebody who's so young. It was disarming because I didn't like look up to see. Um, I could also go with Jay, but Jay seems really dumb, so I'm going with Will. He'll be underestimated Will, because he's young, and he'll talk about being young. And that's why I actually think he's screwed because he's already like, I'm so much smarter than anyone gives you credit for. It. They think because I'm young that I have to be dumb. I'm already smarter than these guys. He's yeah. going to survive a tribal or two, but I think he's actually what Jeff Probst thought Spencer would be in terms of the young, arrogant kid. That's what I'm projecting onto Will. And could I be wrong? Sure, but. Spencer was young and arrogant. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I mean, in terms of like gameplay, because I do think Will also, I don't know, he doesn't seem like he's as aware as he thinks he is, and I think that's going to do him in. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. I think Jay's worse. And Jay's oh, I mean, annoys me for some reason. The thing about Jay is, I think he has the athleticism to guarantee merge. I think Will seems pretty athletic. He's, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, anyways, if I'm going to go well. here and talk about how great Jay is, since it's my turn, I might as well pick Lucy because obviously she's going to do really well. Actually, I'm very on the fence about Lucy. I did just pick her. Um, I can picture her upsetting the alpha males of the Gen X tribe early on, but I think if she can get past that, hopefully she's smart enough to lay low. But even probes didn't seem too happy. Promising about her chances, so we'll see. Go ahead, Ty. The last time I believed in a female bodybuilder, she spent one episode with a bug in her ear and the second episode blowing up her game. Well, uh, and then I picked her as a winner pick also, so. Ooh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she, that poor girl. She was yeah. doing anyway, Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah. Um, Lucy, I think she, from what I remember in her video, she seemed to be very. I don't want to say outspoken, but I feel like she's one of those people who's not going to be afraid to call the alphas out on their BS. And well, then I think when she does, she's going to get smacked down pretty quick. Well, it's because I got both the alphas, so maybe a lot of confessionals in one episode. I mean, I could see her definitely, I could see her lasting a while, because I could see her sort of being the sort of strong woman who's sort of a kind of a badass, but I could also just see her being sort of loud and abrasive, but mm -hmm. I hope she does well. Well, I, I really like her. At least you're a woman. I haven't heard from you in a while. Tell me what you think. Um, like, I, I feel like she, I, I, yeah, I think you guys are spot on with this. She's going to be too abrasive. I don't think she's going to, especially with the millennials, I don't think she's going to be that social. I think her social game's going to be very weak, and that's what's going to get her in trouble. So. And then you, you're also the next draft pick, so go ahead. You determine oh. how this ends. Oh my god, who do I even have to choose from? <laughs> you have Stacy Powell and someone else. That's <laughs> the Andre. Yeah. Blam. Okay. Um Who's Stacy? Alan uh, Robert. CC oh, is Stacy okay. Powell. There yeah. you go. Okay, okay, yeah. I will make it even and I will choose Justin, I guess. Jay. I mean, he's he's gonna get confessionals when he gets booted out episode five. So that's yeah. He'll probably be like my new ironic favorite. So you know. <laughs> I fell asleep watching Jay's cast video. Yeah. <laughs> well, he he seemed like he wasn't really paying attention. No. It was it was weird. Because I was like, if this is how he talks to, because he's like, I'm a people person. And I'm like, if that's how you talk to, 
Do you? Are you though? Yeah, that was my thing. That was my thing. <laughs> I believe on his cast assessment. Let me find it. He said three words to describe himself was determined, intelligent, and funny. And I don't really see any of those three. Ooh, he could have determination. He could have that, but we just can't see it. Yeah. I, I, I think his ceiling, edit-wise, is like Carter, where he's like entertainingly clueless. Yeah. Yeah. Carter was awful. All right, okay. so let's go ahead and let's get this last pick and let's talk about this last lady. Like I said, I think she's the next Stacy Powell. Um, I could be very, very sure. wrong. I hope I am in a way. Oh, I love her. I didn't okay. get to her cast video yet, so I'm just gonna go off of what y'all say. Ty, go ahead. You you put your thumbs down for her. Well. I mean, I work in personal injury law, and she's an insurance adjuster. So she's basically the devil, as far as I'm okay. I'm hoping that her head swirls around a few times like a literal devil when she does her Stacey Pal impersonation and gets voted off. Like, I think Sunday could have legs, because I think this lady's going to raise her mouth and get voted off first by the Marty douche. That is Chris, who ate Marty and thus is fat now. True. True, true. All right. So here we are, viewers, listeners. We have our fantasy teams. All that stuff's going to be posted in the comment box below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you like and like this video. Uh, and join us because we're going to have lots of cool guests for Survival Millennials versus Gen X's. And we're going to have a lot of spoiler information about next season as well, littered in through all of it. No boot spoilers. We don't do that. But we'll be talking a lot about potential cast spoilers. Ty wanted to say something even though I was doing a fantastic job at wrapping this no, up. No, I didn't. I was just saying, like, ooh. Like, oh, ooh, ooh. Well, he had his fingers up. All right. Yeah, so great. I want to thank everyone for listening, and I want to thank you guys, Alex, Elise, Stephen, and Ty for joining ooh. us. It took me a second to remember who Stephen was, but it's kind of funny. Anyways, <laughs> see all of you guys next Wednesday, where it's oh going to be God. us – Plus, Alicia Garza, my wonderful co-host, who apparently doesn't care enough about us to do a fantasy draft, and Billy Garcia. So it's going to be a fantastic time. Goodbye, everybody. And Ben. You forgot Ben. Ben, yeah. Uh, oh, and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh,